at how thin that is. See, you can see my nose right through there. He's one of the most generous people uh, I know. He started Boreal as he worked on the CFMAs, even the Woods Music Advance Camp. He doesn't burden himself with the possibility that he might fail. What I love about Brit is that he has a vision. I think of him like a renaissance man. Uh, the idea of a, a renaissance man. He's just, a, he's just a nice warm person. I've slept with him, you know. Through high school, I was playing music part-time. I was playing in local clubs and that was making my spending money. And then where the naivete comes in is that as a teenager, as a 17-year-old, you know, I thought, you know, I'm not going to starve. I'll figure it out. And it's just as plain as that. He had hair and it was dark hair. He just, he just came in and asked if he could sing a couple of songs, which Fiddler's Game was all about. There was a huge fan club for Grit, even then, because every, they would start off the evening and everyone would say, oh, I wonder what Grit's going to sing tonight. Grit, as a songwriter, taps into several different streams that all contribute to his, his incredible skill as a songwriter. First of all is his sense of humor. I think you have to, you know, and, and one of his f first songs that began circulating broadly, you know, Pete Seeger sang it, it's one of those photographers where he uses the old traditional ballad technique of a metaphor and, and he so there's a Nikon camera as a sexual object. His melodies uh, are always great. I mean, he's, he's got a real, um, a real sense of a singable song. I was at Bill Garrett's a couple of weeks ago and Bill said, you gotta hear this. And he played this guitar piece, this Irish guitar piece that was absolutely brilliant. And he said, tell me who played that. And I was guessing, you know, all kinds of people. He said, no, Rick Laskin played that. With all due respect to other makers, that's the best guitar that's ever been made. I always loved woodworking, even as a kid. I was in the Toronto Folklore Centre and I saw a John Larrave guitar. I was looking where this veneer of wood is joined to the mahogany of the neck. I can see where one wood ends and the next one begins, but I don't see any glue in between there. How do you do that? I run into John. And I said, could I come and work with you? And he said, sure, come on by and we'll give it a try. Grits, guitars, and all the instruments that he builds, there are so many things which set them apart. I mean, and first and foremost of all is their playability, the sound they make. And it doesn't matter what kind of style I play it in. It could be like really pretty delicate finger picking or it could be more like really hard strumming. Um, it always sounds really even and nice across the whole sort of oral spectrum. Uh, I actually have another guitar that is uh, more of a traditional flamenco that I have as a backup on stage, but uh, I just don't like to put this one down. So even if I break a string, I'll do that awkward thing where you run off stage and say, wait there. This has been my guitar for uh, 26 years. It's been on every single record that I've recorded since I started recording. Uh, I don't in fact have another six string guitar. I don't need another six string guitar. I've got this one and that's all I need. Grit Laskin and I are kind of litter mates because we studied with Larve, although we did study at slightly separate times. We came up with this uh, beveled armrest design on the guitar, which is a lot of players out in the universe are very thankful for that because there's an, a nerve that gets pinched and he just eliminated that corner by putting this bevel in there. He also does the thing that he's the, the best known for, I think, in the guitar world is his insanely fabulous inlays. But his, his artistry is beyond belief, that's all it is to it, you know. I have uh, the, the book that he and Brian Pickell put together of, of, of all his inlay art and uh, I, I leave it, actually it's the only coffee table book I have that I leave on the coffee table because people just love to look at that stuff. I would say he's probably, in my opinion, the best inlay artist in the world, bar none. Even better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a portion of an inlay on a peace theme where we have two well-known people in uh, my hand actually holding the peace sign. Do you see that as the outline? And then there's more inlay that will happen down the neck, which is covered in tape right now from the finishing process. And that's paper glued to the surface, and that's 
John Lennon who will show up in the middle behind one of these signs with a line from his song, All We Are Saying Is Give Peace a Chance. So Grit really was the, the impetus for, for forming Borealis and I think that he brings to the role of running a record company that same desire to try and do it right. Well, I think he championed the whole concept of having a label for Canadian folk music, a broad umbrella of styles that one might see at a large folk festival, and uh, it was hopefully music that was going to have something to say. Some companies are, are interested about positioning their company in order to make a, a vast amount of impact in the market. Grit is interested in the artist achieving their potential. I did another record of my own music and I had been on Stan Rogers' label and when he died of course there was no label really and I was going to US labels and they said well we know your music we like it if you want to wait two years maybe we could release it but why don't you go to somebody in Canada? There was nobody. So I thought well wait a minute why don't I get some of my friends together and instead of me taking five thousand dollars from my line of credit and producing this my record, why don't a bunch of us take five grand and throw it in the part and start something bigger? Grit has definitely been the, the guiding light behind this. He's the guy that uh, uh, will go to anybody and ask them for money and ask them for help. He's a, a funny, uh, delightful, uh, pleasing guy that makes a lot of people happy. The Folk Awards, it was seeing a, a need where, uh, where the Junos just weren't answering our community. You know, the Junos roots and traditional categories had too much variety in them. You were apples and bananas were competing against each other and it made no sense. You know? This was a novel that just it just flew out of him, really. He, and he was excite, as excited about writing this novel as he was making his guitars or anything else he gets excited about. Because when he's excited, he's excited. He wrote this novel. It was published, obviously, you can see. It's a great novel. I mean, I don't think he's Margaret Atwood, but I don't know, can Margaret Atwood build guitars? I didn't know he wrote a novel. That doesn't surprise me, but I didn't know that. No. Have you read it? Do you think anybody's read it? <laughs> He's not getting this award for driving though, right? No. Okay, good. We went down to Buffalo with the Volvo Customs, you know, they decided to look look under it because we were all, all musicians, you know. And Grit starts saying, you know, while you're under there, I've been having trouble with the starter. If you don't mind, could you see if there's any wires? And, well, they got furious and dismantled the car. <laughs> uh, and I like the fact that they, that they are proudly and unabashedly about folk music. There's a lot of people who try and hide folk. You can be folk, but just don't say you're folk. You're like, like, don't, don't tell anybody you're folk. That takes a certain amount of chutzpah, and it takes a certain amount of creativity, and it takes a certain amount of just absolutely, I can do this. I have never laughed as much in my life as when I'm with Grit at the woods. He does everything, what can he say? <laughs> I'm holding a soft, Appalachian dulcimer, made by Grit Laskin. And he made it for my daughter, who's now 37. And she was how old when he made it? She was just born. This was, this was his idea of a soft, a soft toy. And so Grit the husband, I'm the luckiest person in the world to be his wife. I feel this viscerally, that a purpose of being is to leave the world a better place than you found it. Not to prevaricate, let me speculate a world where nobody made guitars. Bobby Zimmerman would still be Zimmerman. Segovia would have played accordion. I'm a guitar maker, a tone extricator. Give me wood and I'll make it sing for you. One sound hole and six strings later. Okay. Hey.